Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, today, this panel, oh, well, this session has uh, four presentations. Uh, each speaker uh, gets uh, 15 minutes uh, for their presentation. So, uh, you know, at the time, at the end of your 15 minutes, I will, um, you know, remind you with my voice. So, uh, because it's online, I can't, uh, you can't see me. Anyway, uh, without further ado, uh, we'll have our first uh, presentation. Uh, the speaker is Marie Claude uh, Cote, and she's from, um, you know, uh, Library of, of Archives Canada. So, uh, Marie, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Jen. Before I start, let me mention that I am currently on leave from Library and Archives Canada for family reasons. Therefore, I do not speak on behalf of my institution. I have, however, permission to talk about this project with you. Today, I will present on a proof of concept that Library and Archives Canada led with respect to the transfer of digital records from Government of Canada institutions to our institution. Next slide. So, I will cover our approach to the project, talk about the metadata requirements, what we tested and the results we got, and I'll conclude with lessons learned and next steps. So for you to better understand my presentation, I'll first provide some context. In a nutshell, Library and Archives Canada, which I will now refer to by its acronym LAC, so LEC is among other things, the corporate memory of the, of the Canadian federal government. We fulfilled this mandate by acquiring archival records from roughly 180 institutions composing the federal public service. Through the emission of disposition authorizations by the Librarian and Archivist of Canada, Government of Canada institutions can dispose of their records when they no longer need them for business purposes. Disposition actions include destruction, alienation to a third party, or transfer to LEC in the case of records that have, pre, that have been predetermined to have archival or historical value by, by an LEC archivist, sorry. This is an oversimplification, but you get the idea. We still acquire many analog records from Government of Canada institutions, and, we co and considering the type, uh, the typical retention periods and the volume of records, we will continue to do so for many years to come. However, as institutions move to a paperless office, we acquire more and more digital records. Eventually, we will see a decrease of analog records transferred to us. But in the meantime, we live a hybrid period where we have to acquire both analog and digital. The current transfer process is heavily manual and more suited to analog records. We need to rethink the whole workflow of the record archive continuum from the design of systems that create and manage records within institutions to preservation activities and access provision to future generations that LEC is responsible for. So why would we ever want to tackle uh, such a challenge in two words, digital transformation. If we want to stay relevant, we have to transform and also help Government of Canada institutions transform as well. In the Government of Canada, there are many digital transformation initiatives going on, supported by policy direction. Here are two examples. LEC has stated that records born digitally after 2017 will have to be transferred to us in a digital format, i.e. not printed on paper. Also, Government of Canada institutions must use the approved electronic document and record management system. We call our approved EDRMS GCDocs, as everything starts with GC in the Government of Canada. Behind the GCDocs branding, we find the open text content server product. Knowing that many GC institutions have implemented GC docs, we decided to test if it was possible for institutions to automate processes and GC docs, like retention triggers, identification and extraction of archival records and their associated metadata, and if they could package and transfer them to us electronically 
i.e. not on a physical carrier such as a hard drive or a CD. Specifically, we wanted to validate the feasibility of extracting LEC's minimal metadata requirements from GC Docs, which features proprietary metadata. I'll come back later to those requirements. On this graphic with swim lanes, uh, you get a visual, sorry, that's the next one. No, nope, it's not there, sorry. But on this graphic here, you get a visual of the parts of the workflow we started to test. And there are many parts that are yet to be tested. As we have been burned uh, before trying to board the ocean, we decided to take a smaller step approach. We took a hybrid project management approach combining waterfall and agile. Most importantly, we didn't start with technology. In our first step, we defined the current, <clears throat> uh, the current state of the business processes involved around record transfers within these institutions and within LEC. Then we focused on defining the target state and all the requirements to get there. This allowed our techies, our IT specialists, to better understand where we are and where we want to go. To also configure the GC Docs product and other tools according to the desired state and create XML scripts. As we progressed, we could review and update previous steps. We also decided to perform all the testing with copies of current records from testing institutions instead of real archival records and we limited them to textual records. Talking about the techies, we could count on some from LEC and some from Public Services and Procurement Canada, which is a central institution that provides GC Docs and other software solutions to GC institutions. I'm not going to go over all these names on slides eight and nine, uh, seven and eight. The point here is that it takes an army of dedicated people with various specializations and roles and the support of senior executives, as well as a good governance. For this project, we had two excellent project managers, one from LAC and one from public services. Yep, it was that complex, we needed two project managers. So Carl Brones and Lloyd Hayes, if you're listening to this presentation, you guys rock. They kept senior executives informed and engaged and mobilized all the experts involved, including LAC government archivists and the record managers from the four testing institutions, which were Natural Resources Canada, Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, Statistics Canada, and the Office of the Commissioner of Lobbying. Oh, here's my graphic. So this is a graphic with the swim lane. So you see, let me show you. So you see here the steps that uh, we have tested and the steps we haven't yet tested. So we review the variety of resources to feed our approach and consulted with colleagues from other jurisdictions. I won't name them all again, but I'll just mention that we typically steal, well, borrow from Australia, New Zealand, UK, and our NARA colleagues in the United States. As for resources, the key document for us was the draft minimum metadata standard for transfers of digital archival records, archival government records, sorry, that's a very long title and official. Uh, this document was developed by my team. We suspected that there might be some differences between the metadata supporting analog records and the digital ones. As my team and the government archivists didn't possess an extensive experience processing digital archival records, one of my excellent analysts, Marisa Parham, proposed uh, to set up a focus group in which we had government archivists process digital records. We observed them, we asked them questions about which metadata elements they needed to perform their intellectual work on digital records, the elements they could find easily, the ones hard to find, the ones missing, and so on. We also consulted our colleagues responsible for the digital preservation activities and asked them which descriptive and technical metadata they needed for preservation and that are created by GIS institutions when the records are active. 
after several months in 2018, we came up with a draft of metadata concepts, not metadata elements per se, uh, that must accompany the digital records either at the item or aggregation levels, or both, to enable us to fulfill our mandate. On this slide and the next, you'll see those metadata concepts that can be mapped to metadata elements from different systems or applications. We keep refining them. However, this version seems to be stable, so we should be able to publish it on our website soon. Uh, if you need to get, uh, if you'd like to get a copy before that, uh, feel free to drop me a line. Each of our metadata requirements has been mapped. So these are our metadata requirements. They have been mapped to the corresponding fields in GC Docs. So format, extent, language, resource identifier, title, date and time of each event in the life of a record, creator and classification code can all be mapped to the native proprietary GC Docs metadata. Same with rights management. However, we had to be creative to map the disposition authority requirement. We suspect that technical environment may have to be supplemented in some cases. As for integrity, the value is issued using another tool at the time of the transfer. You'll notice that where it makes sense, we have kept the wording of the DC term associated to the concept. It's a common practice in the GC to use DC terms as a translation slash mapping tool between different element sets. Eventually, we will declare all our application profiles, so this will come in handy. I'm going to pass on these. You can read them afterward. So what we tested and what we found. I'm happy to report that the proof of concept project was successful. GC institutions could send us records. As for metadata for each record, they could be encoded in an XML file, and then records and their metadata could be reassociated easily. We used MODS, the XML encoding of the bibliographic standard mark, as it was used in a previous proof of concept involving the library side of Library and Archives Canada, and the MARC format would cover our metadata requirements. All our metadata needs were fulfilled, including a checksum performed by, performed by the testing institutions before sending us their packages of records and metadata. LEC, LEC asked uh, the GC institutions to transfer records that are free of encryption, encryption passwords, and other protections. While we can automate the detection of protected files, we cannot remove the protections, so GIS institutions must be vigilant. We tested the performance of the transfers with different types of packages. For example, packages containing large records of more than one gigabyte each, packages containing up to 10,000 files, and packages featuring folder paths in GC Docs longer than 260 characters. We could keep track of the original folder paths from GC Docs. We were able to confirm that records uh, and metadata can be exported from GC Docs and satisfy our metadata requirements. The creation of a script to convert the native um, metadata in GC Docs. Uh, uh, was uh, two mods in XML. So you see it here. Can I touch screen? Yes. So in, uh, in XML here. It was a key, uh, a key finding and a key to the success. So thank you again to, to the techies. Uh, we also confirmed that records and their metadata can be exported from an EDRMS, in this case, GC Docs and appear in our long-term preservation environment, which is Preservica. We faced a number of challenges along the way, which are still to be resolved. For instance, versioning in an EDRMS is a common and useful feature. However, from an archival perspective, we don't always want to preserve all versions. Typically, we only want the official version. When institutions send us all versions of a record, it creates processing burden, preservation costs, and access issues for us. 
That said, there are cases when we do want to preserve selected previous versions. How to automate this is yet to be figured out. On the security front, we found that security labels applied to records and GC docs vary greatly from one institution to another. In addition, predefined values may not align with the Government of Canada security scheme. And one last challenge, we are still unsure that the technical metadata we receive from GC institutions is sufficient to support our preservation activities and understand where the record comes from. This aspect requires more attention. As for moving forward, this fiscal year that started just last April, we are refining the testing we did in the proof of concept last fiscal year, this time with real archival records rather than dummy records and opening the door to a variety of records, not just textual ones. To this effect, we are broadening LEC's metadata minimal metadata requirements to include additional requirements according to certain file types, such as audiovisual materials and digitized records. We will also validate the checksums performed by the testing institutions after we receive the transfers. We have a few things on the back burner, such as uh, training records managers on GC docs and creating a preservation mindset at the government of Canada wide level. Also, transfers of sensitive materials is another characteristic we wish to explore in the near future. Down the road, we, we plan to test exports from government wide applications that do not have GC docs in the back end, such as the Microsoft 365 platform. So stay tuned for more developments. I'll be happy to take your questions at the end of the session or by email after the conference. Thank you for